Welcome to Builder 411. I'm your host, Mike Eccles. In today's video, we're going to be talking about three common mistakes that I typically see when homeowners do their own electrical. This video is going to be for those of you that maybe you're wiring in a set of new receptacles. Maybe you're doing a brand new project and you're going to need to learn how to wire in those receptacles. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm your pro builder, Mike Eccles, and here at Builder 411, I try to help educate you into the processes, the materials, and the scales you need for your project. Today we're talking about three common mistakes that I typically will see homeowners make when they're wiring in their electrical uh, outlets. So before I get started, I just want to say a word of caution. Anytime that you're doing any project where it involves your home electrical, if that's not done correctly, you risk damage to your property or to yourself. And it's just not worth it. So if in doubt, pick up the phone, let's call a licensed electrician and let them do it. I typically will see these same three mistakes when someone calls me and they say they have a problem and I go in there and I look at it. And so I want to show you these three mistakes so that you don't make these on your project. Okay, so here we are with a typical receptacle that you'll find in a residential application. These receptacles, the very first mistake that I see people do is on the back of these receptacles, there's little holes in the back. And what those are for is so you can strip off that coating and push that wire into these holes right here. And what I typically see when people do that is, depending on where this application is, these receptacles are put under load. For example, let's say you put a heater in a room. Then our, that, this receptacle will get a lot of load because it draws a lot of amperage through that. There's just a little bit of brass uh, uh, piece of flange in there that holds that wire into that receptacle. And what happens is when you put a load on this receptacle and it gets hot, that metal will expand. And then when it cools off, it contracts back. And after it does that a few times, it doesn't hold that wire in there firmly to make a good connection. Then the next thing you know is it starts to short out. It doesn't get a good connection. Then it doesn't work anymore. So I'm not a big fan of using these. Uh, granted, they're pretty easy to use because all you got to do is strip off about five eighths of an inch off the back, stick your wire in that hole, and then you're done. Put your receptacle in. There again, the problem with doing it that way, those little metal tongs inside here, you, again, you can't see inside there, that hold that in, get hot. And over time, they'll start to give way, and then you're going to have a problem there. All right, that's the first mistake I see. The next mistake I see is if you look at this receptacle, this side right here has, has a brass looking screw. On the, this side, these are a silver looking screw along with the ground wire down here. What I commonly find is people don't wire in the receptacle correctly. They will wire the hot wire onto this side over here. The problem is that's what is called the open side or the neutral side. This is for the white wire. And the easiest way to remember is look at these screws. These screws are kind of a silver looking screw. And secondly, they're also on the same side as the ground. If you look on this other side, you'll see that these screws are more of a brass looking screw. These are more of a silver looking screw. And so, that's the easiest way to tell. Your hot lead wire goes on the brassy, the brass looking side, and your white wire or your neutral wire goes on this side along with your ground. That's the second biggest mistake I find when I go in is I will see that someone wires in the black you know, lead wire on the neutral side of this, this receptacle. The problem with that is that creates a situation which is called an open neutral. I won't go into all about that, but 
That's just not good for the circuit within the house. It's not good for the circuit for your appliance. If you'll notice, this side has a bigger uh, plug-in than that side. So your plug-ins for your appliances are only really made to go in there one way. And when you reverse which side is the hot or the lead side versus the ground or the neutral side, then that's when you get this open neutral and you don't want that. Again, the silver side, which you can see right here, that is your neutral side. The white wire side, also keep in mind the ground is on the same side. And then this side, you have the brass looking screws and that is for your feed or your black wire. That's the second mistake that I typically see when we're looking at problems that homeowners make. This, the next one is this. The, if you look at this plug, it looks like it is wired in there correctly. The black wire is wired on the brass side. The white wire is actually wired on the silver and in my, but here's the problem with this. And you gotta kinda look at this. If you look at this screw right here, you will see that this white wire is wrapped underneath that screw. Therefore, that screw's not making a good connection with that wire. Let's look on the black side as well. You'll see that wire comes out here onto that screw. That is wired incorrectly. What that does is that screw doesn't get to set down all the way on that wire and it, over time, that causes a short. Let me show you the correct way that speed should be done. Here's one wire the same way, but if you look at it, you can see now the wire, the, the coating on the wire is back past where the screw is actually screwing that on. There again, the same thing here, the wire coating is back past this screw. That's very important because over time, if you do it the incorrect way, where that coating becomes embraced behind that screw, that when you tighten that screw down, it does not get a, the full contact it should get. And if this receptacle becomes part of a load, let's say you plug a window air conditioner in there, a little 110 window, that thing's gonna get a lot of load on it. And because of that, that will start to get hot and that coating will then allow a gap in there and the next thing you know it starts shorting out not getting good contact and then you have a problem. So that was the wrong way. Here is the correct way. Look right here, the coating is back and then if you look all the way, then it comes down and it's wired around there. That way it gets a full contact with that screw when it's tightened down. Okay, so let's wrap this up. So three things Three big mistakes that most homeowners will make. The first one is that they end up taking a shortcut and they strip those leads off and they put it in the back of that receptacle. Don't do it that way. I know it's a lot of people like to do it that way. It's easy to do, but I explained to you why not to do that. Eventually, that's gonna, that could lead to a problem. The second thing is what is called an open neutral and where you wire the white wire and the black wire on the wrong spots on that receptacle. So just keep in mind that the brass screws are for your lead or your black wire. That's the easiest way I always remember it is the black is for the brass screw on, on that receptacle and you'll always be correct. The last thing we talked about is making sure that you pull enough of that, when you strip that wire in, is that you pull enough coating so when you wrap that wire around your screw and you tighten that down that none of that coating is in behind that screw that you get a true good connection there and if you do that then you won't have those problems so hopefully this video has shown you the mistakes that not to make but it also will show you that if you have a receptacle that's in your that's in your home and it's not working look for those mistakes because typically when i start to, to look at a receptacle that's not working those are the mistakes i find so it also helps you in doing it, the, the process correctly, but also will help you when you're trying to diagnose which is wrong with that receptacle. Typically, you'll find it's one of those three things right there is a reason why that receptacle is not working. 
So I hope you found this video informative. Hit that bell, give me a subscribe. Until next time, I'm gonna keep teaching, you keep building.